everyone. Thanks for showing up for yourself and for each other. And sounds dramatic, but I would say for all beings that we do this practice uh, to cultivate skillfulness and compassion and wisdom for the benefit of all beings. And hmm, this past um, weekend, uh, well, I think it started on Thursday, last several days, um, I was participating in a Death, Love and Wisdom Summit offered by Oh, oh no, was it Lion's Roar or Tricycle? Oops, it just escaped me. Let's see, it was Lion's Roar. <laughs> Thank you. Kathy was whispering it to me psychically. Um, yes, and amazing teachings. I'll put the link to it down below just in case you can still access it by the time you see the YouTube recording. Hmm. And one of the teachers, it was a Dharma teacher, I believe they're a chaplain, scholar, um, and an author, um, Chen Zing Han. And they've written two important books. One is uh, Be the Refuge, Raising the Voices of Asian American Buddhists, which is so important um, in our, especially if all we've been aware of is westernized Buddhism, which has often been neglecting the honoring the lineage of our Asian teachers. And uh, Chen Zing also wrote most recent book is called One Long Listening, a memoir of grief, friendship, and spiritual care, which is more about death and dying and um, hospicing. Um, and I think particularly being a chaplain, but also, um, I'm not sure their pronouns. Um, they also... Um, share personal stories um, of spiritual care in relationship. So in Chen Zing's talk in this death summit, um, they shared a what's called a Jataka tale. And these these Jataka Jata Jataka means a, a birth story or related to birth. And so these stories are said to be, um, they're quite uh, like parables. They're, they're kind of uh, fantastical, but they're said to be previous births of the Buddha before. Um, and sometimes in animal form, sometimes um, the Buddha in in previous incarnations before becoming the birth of Siddhartha Gautama that became the Buddha, um, had lived other lives as humans, sometimes as various animals. And all of these stories exemplify virtues these are called the paramis uh, in particular generosity but also the qualities of wisdom and care and interconnectedness so they're an important understanding in relation to um the many many lifetimes it takes to for us to perfect and cultivate um the capacity to fully awaken like a buddha so uh and and, and most of these stories are from the earliest early second century bce 
Um, and then there's some later editions as well. So these are very ancient stories and I wanted to share one of them tonight. Uh, because I found it helpful and I hope you do too. That was a long intro, <laughs> holy. <laughs> but I want to give context and um, honor and respect to the the teachers that I heard it from. So, and Chen Zing, when they related this story, um, referenced another teacher. I'll also put the link to them down below, um, who was named Rafe, Rafe Martin. Um, who has written a whole bunch of children's stories and adult books as well, um, and is quite uh, does a lot of translations of these stories. So uh, this version is from Rafe Martin, or translated by Rafe Martin, I should say. Holy, enough with the intros. <laughs> I need a drink. One sec. Okay, story time. This one is about a little gray parrot. And some of you may know this one. Hmm. So this little gray parrot is living in a forest or a jungle. Picture that as you will. And uh, there's a great storm that happens and lightning strikes a dead tree which catches fire sets fire and soon the forest becomes ablaze it catches like wildfire and uh the the month that um I'm currently in is October, but you know, we can relate to the seasons of fires from the summer and the wildfires, and we can picture how quickly and easily with a little bit of wind and and uh, dryness, um, these fires grow exponentially. And uh, this this happens. The, the whole forest begins to burn and spread quickly. And so the parrot cries out a warning to the others that, that they live with. Fire, fire, run to the river. And all the ground animals um, and insects begin to run to the river. And really, if you just pause for a moment to feel that sense of urgency, that sense of a wildfire spreading as is happening all around the world, literal fires, but also um, the fires of war, the fires of greed, hatred, and delusion, and um, how easily it can spread. So I'm sure we can relate. So this uh, little gray parrot calls out this warning and then flies to the safety of the river, being a bird, is also able to fly to the other shore of this great river. So, but as she flies across the river, um, she sees below her all her fellow companions, the animal companions, and um, the trees are already ablaze and um, they are trapped by the edge of the river, surrounded by flames. The parrot could save herself. She could fly to the other shore. And this image of the flames are really um, something that comes up a lot in the in the teachings of the Buddha. In fact, the word nibbana, which in Sanskrit is nirvana, but meaning um, complete liberation, freedom from suffering, means putting out the flames. 
And the flames refer to the flames of greed, hatred, and delusion. And our world is ablaze right now, not just right now, um, with these fires. And uh, really, we are all um, trapped. Some of us have the safety of a further shore, and many, many of us don't. And uh, so she she uh, sees her life companions uh, trapped here, and she has a sense of a way that she has to try to save them. So she flies to the river. Um, the animals are huddled safely there, um, and they feel like nothing more can be done. Each of them, in fact, offers a valid reason for staying safely put and for not making further efforts. They're, they're feeling really trapped. But the little parrot says she's spotted away um, and she is compelled to try. So she immerses herself in the river and wets all of her feathers in the river. And then she fills a little leaf cup with water and flies over the burning forest. And back and forth, she flies back and forth, carrying drops of water. Soon her feathers become charred from the heat and her, her claws cracked. Her eyes are red with the irritation from the smoke. And um, and then here, this is uh, the nature of a Jataka tale. Uh, a divine being looks down upon her, a deva, and uh, sees sees her doing this. And and the other beings, uh, some of them start to laugh at her foolishness. But this one divine being or deva. Um, changes into a great eagle and flies down and tells her that it's hopeless and to turn back, sees her efforts, sees how she's um, being damaged and tells her it's hopeless. Um, she won't listen and continues bringing drops of water. In some versions of this story, um, this eagle divine being um, tells her to save herself. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm so struck by these ones that are safe and above it all looking down and you know, enjoying their delights and their comforts, and <laughs> passing uh, their opinion about it, um, and and they're not uh, joining the fray. So she continues, and she this version it says she. Uh, so I'm just sharing how that was. So let's just say. <laughs> The gray parrot continues their selfless bravery. And um, even though they've been told to stop. And so this eagle, divine being, um, sees this and feels overwhelmed by their dedication and um, begins to weep. And the eagle's tears um, uh, put out the fire and um, all the plants and trees and animals are saved. Um, in other versions, all the other gods also begin but it, the um 
the weeping, the tears of feeling so moved by this courage and compassion um, bring these tears that put out the fire. And the tears also fall on the little parrot and her charred, their charred feathers begin to grow back. And as they grow back, they grow back as red, red as a fire, blue, blue as a river, green as a forest, and yellow as sunlight. The multicolored parrot that we might be used to picturing. And so now she is a beautiful bird. The parrot flies happily over the healed forest that um, she's been able, to, part of saving. They always have a happy ending, these stories. <laughs> and um, as Chen Zing shared, and as I'm sure you can feel, we, we are the parrot and we are those who are trapped in the raging fires of greed, hatred, and delusion. And, and we are the ones who see the heroic efforts of those that it may seem futile. And we are called to join we are called to act and to respond with compassion. Compassion in the Dharma is not just a nice feeling or nice thought. It's a call to action. It's a call to respond to the suffering we see around us. No matter what little droplet it may be, all the little drops of water, if we all offer our drops of compassionate action, this can become a great rainstorm and save a lot of lives. So we can, and I'm sure you are, um, to not negate the small ways, what seemingly small ways that you are responding to the world on fire without knowing the outcome of what we offer, we offer. And to see what's right in front of us, who is right in front of us, also on the other side of other side of the world but also right in front of us, in our own communities, in our own buildings, in our own families, workplace, volunteer place, school, and to include ourselves. Include ourselves. Compassion includes ourselves. It's a, I find it a beautiful, inspiring, touching story to picture this little gray parrot with just a, a little leaf basket and a few drops of water. And it really is a story exemplifying what's called the Bodhisattva vow um, that we will continue through many lifetimes, if that's your um, belief or not, but in in every moment, to strive for the freedom and awakening of all beings, even if we can easily save ourselves. I think that's all. So let us practice. This practice is our way of wetting our feathers, <laughs> of immersing ourselves in wise intention, 
um, so that we continue to move forward, um, onward leading. <clears throat> it's also part of self-care and centering and uh, all the things. <laughs> all, things. <laughs> all right. So um, adjust what you need to um, feel supported and self-caring in your space. You might like to dim your lights or lay down or have a cushion or a shawl. Um, please take a few moments here to adjust what you need to feel like you're beginning your practice with self-care. It's essential that we take care of ourselves. We can't, um, in order to fill our own well, so that we can continue to look after each other. So your posture, your environment is as supportive as it can be. You've hopefully made some adjustments. You might need some movement or breaths or touch or looking around your space. I'm just noticing that uh, in front of me I have a, a little a little wee Buddha that uh, was sitting on top of this feather. <laughs> Making me think of the little gray parrot's feathers. <clears throat> so once you feel supported in your environment and your posture, see what posture is supportive for this practice of awakening and calming, shamatha vipassana, is Eyes closed helpful for you, or eyes slightly open and looking down, or perhaps eyes resting on, on um, something that feels nourishing or beautiful to you. And as the body begins to rest into its posture and the eyes begin to rest, we bring this intention of care to our own being in this present moment, here and now. By just giving some space and attention to this body. What does it feel like in your nervous system to feel held in care? Is there any softening? Widening? space, spaciousness that can come to areas of tension. Softening the face. Resting the shoulders. Releasing hands. Mm. 
inviting some degree, whatever amount is possible, 1%, 10% or more of gentle space around the, the aching heart. And you may feel some upwelling of tears as you just invite some tender space around heartache with heartache. And then feel gently downward towards the inner belly where the nervous system is often contracted in our adrenal fight, flight, freeze response. And see if some degree of softness can come to the inner belly. And as the upper body softens a little bit or more, feeling more weightedness through the hips, legs, and feet, or if you're in a reclining posture, the whole back body resting with the earth. And then a few moments of silence together, just presence, feeling yourself, your awareness here now with this heart, body, mind, exactly as it is, awareness, like a sphere that we rest in. And as we're still just arriving and settling into our practice, you might notice that the winds so easily pick up the, the embers of the mind. And little stories flare up and can easily take off like wildfire. And we just notice, oh, the little wind is picking up a story of either wanting or becoming, not wanting, remembering, imagining, etc. And we just let it go and it falls away. We settle back down here with body in the center of this moment. You don't need to fight it. Just notice when you get picked up and traveled away and rest back gently.
And then we'll gently transition our practice to acknowledging that at different times, to different degrees, we are all at times the one that is trapped in the raging fires. So what What is here within you in this moment that needs care, that needs cooling compassion? There may be loneliness or fear or anger, grief. Wanting and not wanting. All the ten thousands. And we bring the cooling balm of awareness and self-compassion. May I be gentle with myself. May I find some ease with this difficulty, this pain. And see what phrases naturally arise for you in your own inner voice, offering self-care. May I remember being connected to others in times of loneliness. Sometimes with self-compassion practice, it can be helpful to rest a hand at heart center or on the belly. It's also really lovely, or I like holding my face. May I be gentle with myself in this painful time. And then take a few breaths, feeling the body, the connection to the ground, the touch of the hands, wherever they're resting. And then remembering that we are all also the little gray parrot. And we can reach out, even if it's only a small drop. So bring into awareness somebody that you personally know, someone in your direct knowing that is experiencing suffering 
difficulty. The pain of poverty, the pain of racism, the pain of transphobia, all these ways that we separate and isolate and judge and demean. The pain of physical illness, of loss. And just bring into awareness someone that you feel some heart connection with. And we cultivate caring connection. It can be with words or with felt experience. May you be free of this suffering. May you find some ease with this difficulty. May you feel and know care. May you be gentle with yourself. And just see what naturally arises for you in relation to someone you know. May you be safe, may you be well. May you be held in loving care. May you know you are loved. And then gently releasing that heart-mind connection with a dear one or someone you know who's suffering and feel again your present moment contact with ground, feeling the hands, feeling support that's underneath you. If you're feeling any tension or caught in story, you can always open your eyes or take a few deeper breaths. And then remembering that we too are the ones that see the heroic efforts of each other and of infinite number of beings around the world that may seem futile on their own. And we are called to join each other's hearts We here practicing together 
are here practicing for skillfulness and wisdom and compassion. And all around the world, in every language, in every religious tradition, in every spiritual heart, body, mind, people are practicing and cultivating care. You could feel this or see this as an infinite web connecting you, connecting us all. And together, all of us offer our deepest, our deepest offerings of care for all beings. Together we create the great rain. Beyond the conceptions of the small mind and the small body, the small self, together, boundlessly, may all beings everywhere be safe. May all beings everywhere be free. May all beings everywhere be held in the arms of compassion. May all beings everywhere be protected from the raging fires of greed, hatred, and delusion. Rest here, connecting to this boundless web, either with a felt experience, with the heart's intention or with your own inner words and cultivation. And remembering that compassion is an, a response to suffering. It calls us to act. See if there's something within the possibility for you in this week of some small or larger way that you can respond to yourself, to someone you know, to someone you don't know. You could be just reaching out with a call, checking in with somebody,
and making a commitment to yourself that you will try to follow through. May all beings everywhere be free from suffering. You can either continue practicing or gently transition from your practice. And if you're practicing with us um, on the YouTube recording, please check the links below to Jenzing and uh, um, Rafe and um, all the other stuff. I'll pop down down there. Um, You can also find versions of this uh, little gray parrot, uh, Jataka tail. Uh, there was a, there someone that did a YouTube audio of it, but there's also written versions that you can find online. Um, so you can uh, check that out. Thank you for sharing practice with us.